Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation with complex numbers. A very complex equation. So we have e to the power e to the power i x equals i, and we're going to be solving for x values. All right, so let's get started. Uh, this equation, obviously, you can continue forever uh, and see if there's a solution for this. If we had infinitely many e's, would that work? But let's go ahead and look at this finite case first. So in order to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to write i in polar form, and then I'll use Euler's formula, obviously, to express it. And then we're going to use the uh, you know exponential equation idea when the bases are equal, exponents are equal, and so on and so forth. OK, so let's go ahead and start by writing the i as e to the power i times pi over 2. Now obviously you can do this because when you graph it on the coordinate plane you notice that i is 0 plus 1i in other words i is basically represented by the ordered pair or point 0 comma 1 so it's going to appear here and the angle that it makes is or in other words theta is going to be pi over 2 so theta is pi over 2 its modulus is 1 so that's what you need. So if you know those two things, you can write a number in um, polar form using Euler's formula. And in this case, it's going to be r times e to the power i theta. And theta is pi over 2. But r is 1, so we don't need to worry about it. That's why we end up with something like this. Make sense? But here's the thing. This is just pi over 2. But what happens if I add 2 pi to it? It just becomes 2 pi plus pi over 2, which is 5 pi over 2, and it just keeps bringing you to the same point over and over. You can make rotations. That's why we're going to express this in general form and add multiples of 2 pi to this. So we're going to write it as 2 pi n, or you can write 2 n pi, actually. It doesn't matter. No big deal. Same thing. Now, we have the same basis, so we can ln both sides, and then we're going to end up with the same exponents. So these are going to be the exponents. So they're equal, right? Let's go ahead and write it down. e to the power ix equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Awesome. But we got uh, a power of e again, right? And hopefully you know what e to the power ix means. It's actually something in polar form, but that's another story. Uh, let's not get uh, you know distracted by that. And we're going to be using uh, logs uh, one more time, the natural logs. But before that, let's go ahead and write the right-hand side in polar form again, right? But how do you write it? Well, you have to think about the following. This is a complex number, which is basically a multiple of i, something times i. So it's kind of like a k times i. And k times i basically is kind of like a pure imaginary number which has zero real part. You know that a complex number is made up of a real part and then i times the imaginary part, right? That's what makes up z. So in this case, our real part is zero. So that means our plot or point needs to appear on the imaginary axis, which is the y-axis. Make sense? So that also means that, so our number is either here or here, that means the angle is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. But let's just assume, well, you, I think we have a good reason for that. Uh, let's just assume that k is positive here. Because if you think about it, if n is positive, then 2 pi n is going to be positive and pi over 2 is also positive. So we're going to get a positive term from here. And if it's, what happens if it's negative? It's just going to be a different angle. Okay, so under those conditions, we can basically do the following. If z is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi n multiplied by i, then theta is going to be pi over 2 again, just like i. But what about the modulus? Well, the modulus is just going to be the absolute value of the coefficient of i, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So now we can go ahead and write our number as follows. The modulus times e to the power i times pi over 2. But notice that we already used the 
we already used the n as an integer, so we're going to use a different integer here. So here's the thing. Let's go ahead and clear this all up and start fresh. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as e to the power i times, and of course I have to write the modulus first, right? The modulus is going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, multiply by e to the power i times pi over 2, but again, I can add multiples of 2 pi, but this time I'm going to use a different integer, because n and k, these two integers are not dependent, they can be uh, different, okay? Here's what we're going to do. At this point, we're going to ln both sides. So we're going to use natural logs on both sides, and that's going to give us the following. If you go ahead and I could probably just, let's see, I could probably move this away a little bit to make room here, and then hopefully I can fit the ln there. Okay, here we go. So we're going to be lnning this and lnning this whole thing. Make sense? Great. This is just going to be ix from properties of logarithms. And now this is a product. How do you ln or natural log a product? Well, if you think about it, ln a times b can be written as ln a plus ln b. Another property of logarithms. So we can write this as ln of pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. I guess I don't need brackets. I could just use parentheses there like this plus ln e to the power of that, but it's just going to be that thing. So can I just write it? i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Okay? Awesome. Uh, well, we still didn't get x, but we'll get there. We're almost there. So this is a complex number on the right-hand side, but we still have to divide by i. Do you have to divide by i, by the way? No. You can also multiply by negative i, which kind of makes more sense to me, because... If you multiply by negative i, negative i times i is negative i squared, i squared is negative 1, and negative i squared is positive 1. So isn't that great? Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative i. So this is going to be x, and the right-hand side, when you distribute, you're going to get ln something times negative i, and then i times negative i is going to be negative i squared, which is 1. So the real part is actually... Multiplying by i, basically, or negative i, it kind of switches the real and imaginary parts, and it also changes the sign. So it's kind of like a rotation, in other words. Make sense? So this part is going to be negative, though. I'm going to write the i first. It kind of makes more sense that way. And then the coefficient of i after. Okay? So now this is my number. Notice that this number can be basically written as a plus bi the re with the real part and the imaginary part. All right, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and I forgot to show you the Wolfram Alpha's result, and bye-bye.